I've realized the importance of this one thing that has been staring us in the face for as long as we've been humans, but we have become so disconnected from it for all the reasons that you've just mentioned, because we've got devices, because we're switched on 24 seven, we have artificial light, um, is the importance of nature to our health and yeah. our mental health. So you and I might have different taste in music or art. Although having looked around your house, we've got de definitely similar taste <laughs> in art. But, you know, we might not. Um, but nature is the one palette that we all agree on because we've all existed in it since the beginning of time. Mm. And I'm obviously not going to say exactly where you live, but when you invited me, you know, to come to the studio, it's such a beautiful place that I've been to before. I wanted to have the drive here and be in that place and see the views because I know that that will be good for me today. Um, so what has tended, well, well, interestingly during the pandemic, we all maybe did actually consciously spend a bit more time in nature, but I have to admit that since I've been able to move back to the city, travel more again, I'm not spending as much time in nature as I did during the pandemic. And that's at the back of my mind that I regret it, but equally, you know, priorities and just like the rush of life again has definitely had a negative impact on that. So when we spend time in nature, um, we kind of know that it's got, you know, mental health benefits and health benefits. And um, there is research that shows that if you spend enough time in nature on a regular basis, it actually can increase your lifespan. And not just that you live longer, but you live healthier for longer. But um, one of the areas of research that I've come across recently is, so I love going on safari. And I learned quite a few years ago that if a tree gets nibbled a lot by, by a giraffe, and so it's kind of losing its ability to like send the seeds out and grow more of itself, it sends chemical messages in the air to other similar trees around who make themselves bitter so the giraffes won't eat them. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, I thought that was cool. <laughs> but wait till you find out my latest thing, which is that trees and plants, some more than others, release chemicals called phytoncides that actually boost our immune system. They trigger the release of natural killer cells in our immune system that can fight off more infections and cancers. So we're constantly, you know, fighting off small infections and cancers and not even realizing that that's happened. Obviously when they proliferate massively and the immune system can't keep up with them, that's when we become sick. But if you, ideally, you know, forest bathing is where this all came from. But if you go out and spend time, you know, by the ocean or in the mountains or in the forest, even if you have more plants in your house and, you know, if you have a garden rather than just a terrace or a deck or whatever, then you are getting the benefits of um, those chemicals from trees and plants. Isn't that incredible? Mm, just by being in close proximity to them. Yeah. Yeah. I've always just felt the the benefit from keeping like life, really. It's just plants and um, and now living where I live now, which I moved here about six months ago, I totally feel the difference. I mean, mm. it's something that we all intellectually know when we go on hikes or mm. go in the water, we just feel our nervous system be more regulated and mm -hmm. suddenly our problems don't have as much of a grip on us. Totally. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's wild to, to see some of the science behind that as well. Oh, I didn't know you'd only moved six months ago. So you've, yeah. yeah, you've really, you're in the kind of time period of feeling yeah. that difference. Yeah, yeah. And I also feel there's something inherently linked to our human creativity with that. Um, I'm curious if there's anything that came up for you there. There's so much that I want to dive into you with, but I feel like the more that we find ease within ourselves, mm -hmm. which can come by product of being in nature more, uh, we get more access to just kind of like this effervescent creativity of of wanting to express instead of the alternative. Yeah, so it's really interesting that you've come to that conclusion um, intuitively, because when we spend time in nature, what we're essentially doing is beholding beauty. And there's two forms of creativity, beholding and making, and they're connected. They're both good for you for different reasons. But when you are consciously spending more time beholding beauty, which you're doing without even thinking about it by being in nature, then it connects up in that pathway in your brain to wanting to make beauty as well. And so whether that's drawing, painting, singing, chanting, humming, dancing, um, 
and again, let's relate this back to when we were in the cave, you know, we were talking about how, why we would look out for loss more than reward. Well, even before we could speak, we were like beating drums, we were dancing, we were humming, we were doing cave paintings. And we used to think that cave paintings were a way of demonstrating the success of a hunt. But we understand now that it was much more planning the hunt because we couldn't speak to each other. I couldn't say to you, let's go and kill a woolly mammoth today because then we'll have loads of, you know, fur and fat to get through the winter. Um, but if I could draw that with you and help, you know, get you to understand that's what my plan was. But in those days, it was literally all about survival. We didn't really do things for fun. Everything had a reason. So why were we dancing and humming and beating drums? Um... And, you know, obviously we were walking barefoot in nature and we were looking at the stars in the sky. So all of that mindfulness, you know, beauty stuff was happening. But we had to be creative as well. Being creative was contributing to our immunity, to our health, to our longevity, to our connections as a tribe. In fact, the authors of the book, Your Brain on Art, Ivy and Susan, they actually count being in nature as a creative activity. So when they quote their research... It's about the benefits of creative activities on your mental health, your health and your longevity. And being in nature is just another one of those.